Hello and welcome to 100 Days of Summer. I'm Christian Page. Thanks so much for joining me. So I'm halfway through my quarantine. Uh, so we're seven days of 14 and I must say it's, it's quite a relief. It's kind of that halfway mark. Um, it's hard to believe that it was only just a week ago that we landed here, uh, that Stu and I were traveling together on the train and doing that, blog, that post from there. Um, but we are halfway through and it's getting more intense. Um, the, 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 the activities every day around you know, the calls that we're on and, and you can getting feeling that anxiousness but anticipation and excitement as the uh, the venues start getting built. Um, but one of the interesting little sort of points of reference, which I think it kind of gives you an example of, you know, we build this event over seven years or so. Uh, last four years, it kind of, you know, slowly ramps up. We call it the, the J curve, like a hockey hockey stick. You know, it kind of ramps up and then gets quite 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 a sharp uh, ascent, if you like, to the to the peak. Um, but then when you look at it from a project management, and I talked about a little bit about that yesterday, we're delivering over a, a longer period of time and we do a lot of planning and a lot of test events and all of those activities. Um, and there's a lot of the core services which are delivered um, around technology. So I've talked about you know, the LAN and the energy and a lot of infrastructure that goes in, which can go in a bit earlier. But a big chunk of it actually happens in this last last stretch, these last 30 days. Um, and that was evidence in a call uh, we had yesterday uh, where it was shared that, you know, we've still got, you know, pretty much like on average around 90% of the overall equipment and, and deployment for a couple of the key pieces. You know, we talk about with timing and scoring, uh, all the audio and video. So there's a mega Panasonic, um, the Diva Networks you know, going in. Um, so all of this is hitting at the same time um, and happening very, very rapidly. Uh, and this is what makes it a quite an, an exciting piece, but also quite uh, a little bit anxious because, you know, a lot of moving parts and a lot of flexibility that needs to be displayed. And when I get back to project planning, you know, the, the efficiency of your model and how it all works and your resource planning, all of that comes together and really gets, really gets pressure tested. Uh, and it's also quite, you know, why, you know, we've got some incredibly experienced teams around the table that make this delivery happen. Um, you know, up until the postponement, we used to always say, oh, you know, the, 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 the start date of the games is immovable. It, what's one of the major... Um, benefits of running the games and especially from a project delivery perspective if you're thinking about a project management one of the things that often slips especially in you know, big construction or software you know you'll quite often see the, the the end date shift move out a little bit and the release date um, but the games is one of those fixed date events uh, most of the time uh, but this is certainly the case now we've got a fixed date we're going to deliver it um, and this is where everybody's working towards Another piece is really is, is about the teams and the opportunity to learn. Um, I think one of the greatest experiences I had was when I worked for the London 2012 Games. Um, there we had Jerry Pennell who was the CIO and then I was working with Adrian Kokorin who's now CIO of Birmingham 2022, a good friend. Um, and I shared a little bit earlier about how you know we went through my interview process of, and joining London 2012. But it was my contemporaries, it was my peers, um, the senior team within the venue technology sort of responsible for making sure, you know, our teams delivered into all of our venues um, and supporting them to make their projects work uh, was, was where I learned a lot. Um, you know, you met my travel buddy, Stu Frame, um, who's been around the games. He's done multiple com games, um, European games, a couple of uh, Olympic games. Um, I was also working with Martin Banfield, who I first worked with uh, in, in uh, Sydney. Um, you know, he came from the military, so there were some really great learnings that he brought to the table around organisation, about uh, command and control, you know, all of those things that I would never have had exposure to, typically, um, in such a uh, unique way, in such a close way, because we worked very, very closely in terms of understanding how we were going to work with our teams and building our project plans and building our modeling and all of those things. Um, we also had Roger Bow, who came from very much an IT and technology delivery, multiple games editions. Uh, John Can, again, previous games, but a very good program manager in, in understanding how programs work, especially around technology delivery. Uh, Rich Carter, again, came from uh, Com Games and, and Telecommunications and IT delivery. Uh, so um, who else do we have? We had Martin Rad we had Wade, uh, Wade Kranz, again, strong telecoms background um, in terms of understanding how the telecommunications piece works. So great project management skill sets that all of my peers brought to the table. 
Um, who else do we have? We also, and then we also had Simon, Simon Ingham. Again, he's a uh, Marine reserve, reservist. Um, again, uh, understanding what it really means to work under pressure. And he brought some great uh, awarenesses around what it meant to work in a hostile environment, um, but also just to understand how to work under pressure. You know, so all of these guys, which I, I said, I, I learned a lot from. And I, this is also one of the special things about working on the games that I've, has been for me. Every games I've learned so much and the learning opportunities. And I, and I recommend to anybody, if you have an opportunity, it, it, you know, if you want to have a career break and thinking, what am I going to do next? You know, if you can explore working on an honor games, um, whatever the scale of the multi-sport event it is, it can be incredibly rich. Uh, just this, this uh, camaraderie, the teamwork, uh, what we're working towards, you know, we're doing this for the athletes. It's bigger than us. It's not just about any one of us. Um, there's so many uh, great learnings uh, that I've, I've gleaned from my years of doing the, the games that are, are incredibly valuable. And I use every day. Uh, so this is, again, one of the reasons. So like I say, there's a lot you can learn from your contemporaries. Bring different areas, different experiences uh, into the team. Um, and obviously, you know, also all of our venue technology managers coming from different spaces. There's lots of opportunities to learn from each other. So that's what I was going to share a little bit today uh, about just sort of reminiscing, but also looking at some of the challenges we're facing and some of the challenges we faced in previous games and, you know, bringing that experience to the table and helping to untangle some of these, these, these little knots that are appearing uh, in these final 30 days. So wherever you are, stay safe, stay healthy, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye for now.